For Criminal Media's Polity, I'm Tabi Shomalekai. Joining me today is former boxing champion and independent candidate, Love Mondo, here to discuss his candidacy ahead of the crucial 2024 elections. Tell us about your life history and what has been your career path that has brought you to stand as a candidate in the May 29 elections? Look, I, I was born in Messina, um, you know, um, so I grew up, you know, during the apartheid era. So I experienced uh, everything that, you know, everybody experienced through apartheid. Uh, and uh, I took up boxing, you know, as a ticket out of poverty and uh, as a ticket out, out of, you know, apartheid South Africa. Uh, you know, went on to become four times national champion as an amateur in South Africa, and then um, eventually turned professional and um, started my boxing career in South Africa as a professional. But um, in 1996, uh, you know, I then made uh, the decision to move to Australia. Uh, you know, for me, uh, at the time, I wanted to further, you know, my, my boxing career and, and, and you know, uh, to further my studies as well. Uh, on an international level and, and platform. At the time, I felt, you know, uh, development and infrastructure, you know, in South Africa, you know, um, did not support those goals that I had. Uh, and, and not to say, you know, much has, has changed since then, because if anything, we are pretty much regressing. You know, the country is regressing. The country is moving towards the wrong direction. Uh, so my point is, um, at the time, South Africa did not support those goals. And I had gone as far as I could in South Africa. So um, if you look at it, you know, Australia is a first world country and I wanted to enhance my skills and then, you know, come back, you know, and invest in South Africa, which is what I'm doing now. Often people criticize me, you know, say, you know, how would you know what's going on in South Africa? You've been away, you know, for 27 years. You know, the thing is uh, I never lost touch, you know, with um, my nation. I did not defect uh, you know, I stayed in touch uh, and uh, I kept coming back and forth to South Africa. You know, my, my roots are firmly rooted, you know, in South Africa. And, you know, moving to Australia it was the best decision I ever made, you know, because if you look at it, you know, I wanted to become, you know, three times world boxing champion. You know, I, I now have seven university degrees, you know, which include law and politics, you know, and, and without bragging, I am more educated, you know, than all the presidents this country has ever had, you know, and, and that's a fact. Uh, and this makes me, you know, an exceptional candidate, you know, and extremely qualified, you know, to occupy a seat in the National Assembly or, or even run a better South Africa or even become a president of this South Africa someday. The thing is, I've been a student, you know, of uh, a First Nation country and, uh, you know, I, I've learned a lot, you know. Um, so, like I said, you know, I would like to apply my skills and learn into South Africa. You know, uh, what Australia what Australia has taught me, you know, is to build, you know, and maintain infrastructures. What Australia has taught me how to fight corruption, you know, uh, how to care for the elderly, you know, how to provide job security for people. You know, I'm sure you know, uh, if, you, if you do your research, you know, I also own a law firm in Australia and I own you know, a number of lawyers. So I know how to create job opportunities for people, you know, and I know the importance of uh, education. So I do epitomize the value of education. That's what I want to bring in you know, South Africa. You know, we need a better educational system because currently when I look at the current educational system, it's no different you know, to the former, you know, Bantu educational system we had. This educational system continues to fail our people. Australia has been good to me, you know, better than good to me. You know, it uh, equipped me, you know, with uh, cross-sectional tools, you know, to run a better South Africa, you know, uh, a South Africa where I would say, you know, the future of our children is guaranteed. Uh, what's really, really important is, uh, you know, um, it's been now 30 years, you know, since the first democratic, uh, you know, um, historic election we had. And um, I think it's now time that we all should now start, you know, we need to reflect on the journey we are all on. You know, uh, what, what has become apparent, you know, is uh, that the dream of 94 is no more. You know, the rainbow has faded. Um, you know, we, are, we live in a land that's divided, you know, and, you know, a land once again, you know, split, you know, by a minority of people only looking after themselves. So, the way I see it you now, we are once again, you know, faced, you know, 
uh, but the kind of division we fought so hard to overcome. And I say now it's time for South Africans, you know, to make a choice. You know, we have to make a choice to secure our future. You know, it's uh, time, you know, once again, you know, uh, to overcome the evils of the ruling party. So what I'm saying is it's time for South Africans to decide, you know, which South Africa, you know, do they want to be? You know, are you do you want to be the South Africa that's stuck, you know, in the grip of corrupt politicians, you know, and broken, failing infrastructure? Or you want to be part of the South Africa that hopes, you know, the South Africa that believes, you know, the South Africa that hasn't given up, you know, on the dream of a prosperous future. And I say, you know, if you still have hope and you want to build a better South Africa, then come with me. Hence, I'm running, you know, as an independent candidate. What people really need to look at, you know, when it comes to me, it's um, I have no other ulterior motive, you know, other than, you know, to try and, you know, other than to save South Africa, other than to save the people of South Africa, other than, you know, to lead South Africa, you know, out of the cre crisis created by the ANC. For me to even make this move, you know, coming back to South Africa, you know, I'm sacrificing a lot, you know, uh, financially, economically, you know, my family, I'm leaving my family behind and my children are back in Australia and I'm here in South Africa. So this just shows you I've got no other ulterior motive other than, you know, to save the people of South Africa. You know, basically I'm coming back because um, I'm concerned, you know, the country is heading towards a wrong direction. You know, our country is uh, you know, on the brink of collapse. And if nothing is done now, eventually we're going to reach a point of no return and most probably end up, you know, like our neighboring countries like Zimbabwe. And Love Mo, can you tell us why you opted to stand as an independent candidate and not join a particular political party? And on which ballot will your name appear on the May elections? Look, at the moment, I don't think, you know, um, actually, this is what's happening. I was in the process of putting a party together to be called Babsa, building a better South Africa. But the my aim and intentions were to run in the 2029 elections. Uh, but then when Ramaphosa then made you know, an announcement that you know that for the first time independent candidates can run, I thought, you know what, I might as well run now as an independent uh, candidate. Um, look, why didn't I join another party? You know, um, I just don't think there's a party out there that's... Uh, you know, an alternative, you know, there's, you know, I just don't think, um, you know, you look at uh, parties like, uh, you know, um, I, I'll talk about, you know, the three main parties, you know, the African National Congress, you know, the EFF and the DA, you know, uh, I've got issues with these parties, I've got issues with the way they've been behaving and, you know, particularly, you know, with some of them, you know, what they stand for, um, <clears throat> the African National Congress, it's a failed party, you know, that's got nothing else, you know, left to offer, you know, but blame, you know, it blames, you know, uh, all its failures, you know, on apartheid, you know, on a white capital monopoly that's non-existent, you know. <clears throat> it is also a divided party, you know, and we all know that, you know, a divided house cannot stand. Um, I always tell people, you know, this, if, if, you know, if this party cannot keep its own house in order, how do you expect it, you know, to keep a country in order? You know, it, 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 it's, it's a divided party. We know what's happening now with the, now we've got another faction, you know, coming out, out of this party called the MK. You know, that's another party I would stay away from. Where I say, you know, Ramaphosa is, you know, is the most useless president we ever had. I also say, you know, uh, Zuma was the most corrupt one. So he, the truth is he previously sold, you know, our country to the Guptas. We all know that, you know, who is he going to sell the country to next? So you ha really have to be cautious about, you know, the, the MK. It's a, it's a faction of, you know, the, a failed ANC. So you can expect nothing else from it but more failure. You know, the problems we're facing today, some of them were created, you know, by Zuma's administration. You know, uh, if you look at, uh, uh, for example, you know, uh, the load shedding problem we're facing now, it started during Zuma's uh, administration. So you can't expect anything special from that party, but failure as well. And then, you know, the DA, okay, the Democratic Alliance, you know, is a party that's, you know, formed, you know, out of splits and mergers. It has been the official party forever. And that seems to be 
all is good for. You know, the DA, you look at it, you know, it's good, you know, at pointing out what's wrong, you know, with the opposition, but cannot come up with alternatives. You know, uh, so that concerns me. And I also look at the DA, you know, as a party for the middle class, you know, and does not understand that, you know, meaningful change begins at the grassroots, you know. Um, the D, you know, the DA leaders, you know, um, don't understand, you know, like, for example, the people of Limbobo, you know, the province that I'm standing for, you know, that, you know, these people are not concerned about issues like climate uh, change. You know, these people are concerned about how they're going to put food on the table the next day, you know, how they're going to pay for their children's school fees and how they're going to pay for their medical fees, how they're going to pay, you know, for their rent. And not to say, you know, fixing climate change is not important. It is, but, you know, it won't feed hungry people in Limbobo unless the DA changes, you know, you know, the way, you know, some of his policies, you know, some of the things that, you know, it prioritizes. Yeah, you know, then maybe I might, you know, if that happens, I might consider joining an alliance with it. One party that I will never work with is the EFF. Because if you look at it, you know, uh, its leader, Malima is, uh, you know, he's a dangerous right-wing extremist. Malima wants you to believe that, you know, he wants people to believe that, you know, He's going to give them, you know, everything for free. You know, he wants people to believe that, you know, he's going to give them land, you know. And I say anyone that thinks and believes that Malema is going to give them land, you know, is misguided and is living in a bubble. You know, uh, if anything, you know, I say he's going to expropriate, you know, the wealth and land, you know, wealth and land and share it, you know, with his cronies, you know, the people that work with him. Um, and, and particularly, you know, he, if you look at his policies, like, you know, he wants to control the banks. He wants to control, you know, the mines. You know, he wants to control land and everything. You know, that it's called, you know, kleptocracy. It's a well-known trait, you know, uh, used by tyrants, you know, by detectors, you know, dictators to gain, you know, absolute power. And that's what he wants to do, you know. Um, but again, if you look at, you know, Malima's party, you know, um, the EFF has already destroyed, you know, places like, you know, Ekuru land. Now, imagine, you know, if they would, if they have to run this country, you know, they would destroy the whole country. And often I say, when I look at um, the EFF, you know, personally, I don't see any difference between the EFF and the African Aviersan Beviechen, if you remember the AWB, you know, I, 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 I don't see any difference between them because, you know, uh, they preach the same thing. They preach in hatred. You know, they, you know, are preaching in a racial, uh, you know, racial division. You know, and I think it's very, very concerning. You know, when you have a party leader, you know, an elected representative of a country, you know, con you know, who continuously, you know, preaches, you know, hate speeches and sings songs about, you know, killing, you know, the Boers. You know, this is not the South Africa we fought for. This is not what you know the likes of Nelson Mandela spent 27 years in jail for, you know. But in terms of you know, would I ever consider working with other parties? Look, I'm open to working you know with other independent candidates, and I'm also open to working you know with unrepresented uh, you know you know parties, you know. And this is not to say you know I I totally agree with some of their philosophies, their policies. Uh, or what they stand for. No, 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 I don't agree. I might dis I dis disagree with some of their policies and, you know, because um, I find some of their proposals being extreme, but it's not for me, you know, and I think it would be very improper, you know, for me to comment on these parties and try and judge them now, you know, until they have played a part in, par in parliament, you know. Um, but, you know, having said all that, what I know is, uh, you know, um, we might have different philosophies, we might have different policies, you know, uh, you know, our ideologies might, might differ, but, you know, um, what I know for certain is that, you know, we, you know, we are all advocating for change, change of government, you know, and uh, we are all advocating for a better South Africa for all. So we just need to find a way to make it work. You know, hence I say, you know, I make sure I'm open to working, you know, with other independent independent candidates and you know uh, unrepresented parties. So with that, what is your view on coalition governments at national level? Again, you know, having said to you, you know, I'm I'm open to 
working, you know, with other parties, you know, um, I'm so concerned when it comes to, you know, coalitions in South Africa. I just don't think South Africa is ready for a coalition, you know. And I say based on what we have seen so far uh, in local governments, coalition only works where parties, you know, against the same philosophy and policies. You know, it will not work where, you know, uh, parties differ in, you know, ideology and policy. Like I said, you know, what we have seen in 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 uh, Ekurulen, uh, KZN, you know, or Chwane, you know, pretty much reflects, you know, broader challenges within coalition governments. Uh, you know, uh, these coalitions don't work because of, you know, um, the, the battle, you know, battles for power and positions, you know, by party representatives, you know, the mistrust and factionalism, you know, that, that goes on, you know, including the tendency for the leaders to put power before the people. And this results, you know, in lack of service delivery. Uh, now, this is only on a local government. Now, imagine if we have this on a national level, this is, this will be disastrous, you know, for the country. So, and the other thing that really doesn't assist when it comes to coalition, you know, governments is uh, if you look at it in you know, a coalition agreement, you know, coalition agreements are not legally binding. So, you know, parties can always walk away from them at any given time, you know, without recourse. So, and, and with what we've seen in South Africa, you know, everyone is pretty much obsessed with power. Everyone wants to be the president of the country. And we know why they want to be the president, because it puts them in that position to steal more, you know, from the people. So I don't think, you know, a coal, you know South Africa is ready for a coalition. And a lot of political parties have pledged to tackle constraints to investment and employment ahead of the nation's 2024 elections. So with that, which issues will you be prioritizing if elected to parliament? Obviously, you know, I'm campaigning on a number of issues. Uh, you know, however, if if you look at it, you know, the questions of unemployment and corruption are major issues, you know, in this campaign. Uh, and, and you know, I'll have to point out to you, you know, it, it's unfortunate, but, you know, our black leaders, you know, have failed our nation. If you look at, um, you know, the consumer price index, you know, it continues, you know, to rise, you know, under, you know, under the leadership of this current government. Um you know, in the inflation rate also, you know, it's skyrocketing. So, and if you look at it, you know, we've got millions of men and women out of work. You look at the ANC, the ANC doesn't have a plan as to how it's going to, you know, provide jobs for people in the future. Now, obviously, to create jobs for South, you know, for South Africans, we're going to have to bring international investors in South Africa. Now, to bring international investors in South Africa, you need to get rid of you know, of over regulations. You know, you need to get rid, you know, of uh, policies like you know the BE, you know, uh, which is pretty much you know um, a fair policy. You know, a policy that's uh, you know only benefiting a few. You know, it's benefiting about five percent. Uh, you know, of uh, the population. You know, while ninety five percent continues to to suffer. You know, and BE is keeping potential investors away. You know, so to bring those potential investors back, you know, we need to get rid of, you know, policies like B, or if we don't get rid of it, at least we need to make sure that, you know, the policy is implemented, you know, implemented to a point that it does what it was put in place to do in the first place. You know, um, the idea, and I always say, you know, the idea behind B, you know, you know it's uh, loadable, you know, but it's failing because, it's, you know, it's not being implemented and, you know, it's become, you know, uh, the cornerstone, you know, of corruption. So, again, you know, to repeat what I said, you know, to bring international investors, we're going to have to get rid of, you know, of our regulations. Uh, and then you also need to get rid of policies, you know, like the CARA deployment, you know, because because of CARA deployment, you know, people that are qualified for certain jobs are denied those jobs. They're denied opportunities you know, uh, to, to hold, you know, positions, you know, and then people that are not qualified are given positions that, that are not qualified for. And this is why we've got such a failed government, you know, and this is why, you know, corruption continues in this country because 
even the people that are given those positions, even though they can see the corruption that's going on, they can't speak up against it because they don't want to lose their positions. Once they start speaking up against, you know, you know, the, the government, or, you know, or the current, you know, uh, government, obviously, you know, they're going to lose their jobs. And I always tell people, you know, don't ever think Ramaphosa is not aware of the corruption that's going on. You know, and don't ever think Ramaphosa is not ashamed of the corruption that's going on. He's well aware. He's ashamed, but he won't speak up because he knows if he does, he's going to get exposed himself because, he's, you know, he, he doesn't have clean, clean hands himself. So to change South Africa, we need a new government. We need new leadership. We need to get rid of, you know, of uh, policies like, you know, like care deployment. We need to have people that are qualified, you know, running office. Uh, with cater deployment, what processes will you follow to ensure that you have people you trust in key government positions? I'll make sure that, you know, people are hired, given jobs based on their qualifications, not based, you know, on their, you know, uh, affiliations, you know, with the party, you know. I'll, and also, also make sure, you know, people don't have to pay bribes, you know, to secure jobs, you know. Um, so... I'll make sure, i also make sure that, you know, the rule of law remains sacrosanct, which is supposed to be. I'll also make sure, because currently we've got a situation where, you know, our, our leaders, you know, are the law unto themselves. So that needs to change. To change that, you also need, you know, to have, you know, a, a working legal system. Currently we've got a legal system, system that's failed. You know, we know some people are corrupt, you know, and we know some people have been investigated and uh you know but nothing has been done you know you know they just sit in there they still hold high positions because our legal system is failing nothing is done so i'll make sure you know we have a working legal system and the rule of law remains sacrosanct and uh you know that's the only way you can get away you get rid of you know cadet deployment and and have qualified officials holding the right positions how much support are you aiming for in this year's elections look i think um it's going to come down to what I'm already doing. You know, I'm out there on the road. I'm out there on the ground doing things that, you know, parties are not doing. You know, I'm out there fixing problems that, you know, the municipalities are not fixing, you know, like blocked sewages. I go around places like Mosina, Toyando. I'm fixing all those, you know, issues, you know, out of my own pocket, you know, in places like Mosina, you know, where, you know, when, you know, during floods, you know, you know, people, you know, we go and help people clean up their shacks. You know, we I'm paying, you know, I help people, you know, with their meals. I pay for their children's school fees. I provide them with, with whatever help I can, you know, provide. So I'm out there doing things, you know, that the parties are not doing. And I think that's what's going to count at the, at the end of the day as to how many votes I'm going to get. But, you know, I'm, I'm really not concerned about how many votes I'll get. I'm not really concerned about whether, you know, you know, in these elections, I secure, I get enough votes to secure a seat in the National Assembly. No, I'm not. All I'm concerned about is bringing change in South Africa. And that's what I'm doing. You know, I'm more of a humanist than a, polit a politician. So people will see and people will decide. And people, if people feel I'm the right person, you know, then they'll vote for me. So even if I don't get in now, that's not the last you're seeing of Love More. You know, I'm a fighter. Okay, and and uh, I bring that you know fire spirit with me, fighting spirit with me. You know, I'm the kind of guy that if you knock me down, I'll get up and I'll continue fighting. And that's what separates champions from contenders. So, whether I make it or not during these elections, you're gonna see me in 2026 running as Babsa. You're gonna see me in 2029 running as Babsa. And one day, you know, we're gonna bring that change in South Africa. And are we likely to see an increased voter turnout in this year's elections? And will we see a change in voting patterns, especially with the inclusion of independent candidates? Look, it, it's really hard, you know, to predict what's going to happen. You know, I think what happened over the years, you know, a lot of people have lost hope, particularly, you know, in, uh, in, in the ANC, because a lot of people... You, you know, you have to rem remember one thing, and we can't take this away, you know. People are still loyal to the ANC because it's the party that allowed people, you know, to test freedom, you know. Uh, even though it's failing them, you know, people just choose not to vote, you know, instead of voting against it because there's no other alternative. 
maybe, maybe now that you know you've got you know independence, you know maybe people might just say, well, maybe it's time to vote for an independent because when you're voting for an independent, you know who you're voting for. But when you're voting for a party, you don't know exactly who you're voting for because you know a party leader can always change at any time, and whoever becomes the president of the party becomes the president of the country. But with an independent candidate, you know exactly who you're voting for. So you never know. Why would you encourage South African voters to vote for you on May election? Well, for a number of reasons, you know, because one, I stand, you know, uh, I stand, you know, for a corruption free South Africa. You know, I stand for a South Africa, you know, where the future of our children is guaranteed. And I stand for a South Africa where, you know, people won't have to pay bribes to secure jobs. You know, a uh, South Africa where the basic needs of our children, you know, of our people, you know, like clean water, better healthcare system, free education, you know, better sanitation system, you know, are, are met. You know, uh, I want to see a South Africa where, you know, every child, you know, that has the right grades to go to university, given that opportunity, you know, to go to university. You know, I'm the kind of guy that when I see a child going to school, in an empty stomach or going to bed, you know, in an empty stand, uh, stomach, it concerns me, even though that child is not mine, you know, even though, you know, I'm not related to that child. If I see an elderly, you know, suffering, you know, uh, and, and can't afford, you know, to get med, you know, uh, medical treatment, you know, because of a federal government, it concerns me whether that elderly is my grandmother or grandfather or not. It concerns me. So, I stand against, you know, policies, you know, like BEE, you know, which are the cornerstone of, of corruption. You know, and I stand against crime in general. You know, uh, um, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a qualified lawyer and I know, you know, what needs to be done, you know, in order to, you know, to reduce crime in, uh, in, in South Africa. And one of the things we really need to do in South Africa to reduce crime is we need to give people jobs. Some people are stealing because or, you know, committing crimes because that's the only way they can feed their families. You know, if you create jobs for people, you reduce the crime. But you also need to have a, a working legal system. So, but you need to, people need to vote for me because, you know, I've got no other ulterior motive other than to save the people of South Africa and lead South Africa out of the crisis created by the ANC. That was Love Mondo speaking to Krima Media's polity about his candidacy ahead of the crucial 2024 elections.